What's your order? Of 
regional security. Each one is derived from different conceptions of security that have room in their alternative worldwide. Both the concepts of region and security need to be opened up by mutually considered relations between advancing regions and conceptions practice of security. There's nothing natural nature about geographic assumptions of language. Uh, of language, the driving purpose between the identification and naming of geographic sites has almost always been military strategic gender. It's Middle East intervention, usually described to me on the unsuggested side. The British make up the responsibility of maintaining security in the Gulf and its coast Middle East, so that the route to Asia and the will be secure. Russia kept in check in the interwar period, the discovery of considerable qualities of oil in the Arabian Peninsula, and the increase of use of Jewish migration in Palestine, like the link these shocks to the territory of man's Middle East. Boundaries were set to the region, led to the changes of British war and policies. The argument so, sharp, so far should not have been taken to mean that it was solely the military strategic interests of Western powers that have been the driving force behind the intervention and reproduction of such representations. However, not all societies have been able to pose their maps on others. Um, next. Um, Crisa, actually, I'm not doing that part. Um, uh, U.S. Care, scholars characterize China's security threat by demonizing the other. The basis for the self of many U.S. scholars have claimed their expertise on China from this observation. Robert Kagan is confident enough to speak on behalf of the whole Chinese people claiming that he knows the fact over what China really thinks about the United States. For Kagan, because the Chinese have no other information other than their government's propaganda, the professors could not know the whole event as we do thus, and we must have been orchestrated on real hits not taken seriously. The truth is, China can pose a great problem even if it does not become a military power in the American model. does not intend to commit aggression or degrades into a global problem will rise politically. By now, it seems clear that the their Chinese capability in the doesn't really matter. Rather, almost by even very geographical existence, China's will call it as an, a strategic other discursive that China cannot escape. Um, as a result, it is difficult to legitimize space for alternate ways of thinking and inherently by to lack of more just trying to recognize China's future uh, trajectory goal politics is contingent essentially on um, how we in the United States and the West in general want to see it as well, and how the Chinese choose to shape it. Indeed, the discourse is also not rise close to how we and what we are deal with them, what they are in the political realm. Um, Next, attempts to soften America's image and increase relations with other countries based on gender binaries. Christians and eight. Uh, the image of dating relationship not only offers the opportunity to characterize Europe as a woman, but also to debate the value of the different ways of being men. The case for more gentlemanly and diplomatic masculinity is made in terms of arguing that there is sometimes a little bit too much testosterone, sometimes flirtation and compliments to reward masculinity. It suggests here is more gentle than the cowboy granted war speakers. Being cowboy evokes connotation flaws, crudeness, and isolation from the pro war speaker means the spreading of civilization overall cowboy masculinity. Saturates word of being the most common gendered image. Um, back to the Middle Eastern link. Um, uh, Crisis representations, naturalized imperialist orientalism, and naturalized West as Russian source of security and oil, and others as irrational, dangerous, and in need of intervention. Telfa 95. Uh, media has felt the dangers of the fundamentalism and nuclear war has turned in the Middle East to be a powder keg where the crisis reached boiling point. There are crisis metaphors give fear to a given expression of fear that the Middle East is out of control. Uh, metaphors should not be treated simply as rhetoric decorations, but rather as key people's imaging and reasoning with the world. Metaphors are not mere windows on the tools or understanding pre existing reality, but rather to take part in situated practice of defining reality. In conveying authority, they discredit or de emphasize rival interpretations as they have bearing upon political reality, including relations to domination and control. Much of the crisis is part about the gods that we see. Um, construction of politics, which increase tensions or pressure is set a commonly uh, um, on an explosion. Um, so back to our um, uh, off case. Basically, we're, what we're talking about is the way that the affirmatives discussing the security, um, their their view on international relations, it's deeply gendered and it makes their methodology suspect. Um, it's a masculine view, it's a masculine ideology, and that ideology is the root cause of all the problems that they're trying to solve. Um, by ending this root cause, we can uh, begin to solve for problems such as proliferation, environmental destruction, domestic violence, and war. Um, war, is a, war is a product of uh, gendered understandings of life um, in which the masculine dominates the female, and this can only be removed when these understandings change. Once these understandings change, um, we can begin to fix the way the world is. I mean, war is not a natural practice that arises out of... Um, because 
because basically the only way that you can soften America's image is through this like diplomatic masculinity. And you can't go in, if you're going in as a diplomat, you can't go in and be all, in today's society, because I don't say I accept this, but you can't go into the war room and say, well, we should focus on peace. You have to go in diplomatic, manly, like we talk about like being a cowboy and go in with that like mentality. And if you don't go in with that mentality, you can't get anything done in international relations today because it's completely focused on these like gendered binaries. And um, the, when you're attempting to soften their image, it's, it, America's image, it's impossible because of these gender binaries. How does feminism like directly give a positive impact? Because you guys securitize and are, it's like a thing, okay? like it's just about feminism and international relations. So it's the all of that. To embrace the feminist ethic and to uh, reject the masculine conceptions um, and challenge the inequality and violence of the status quo. Like okay, right now. Okay, what, is, what is the feminist ethic? Like, like just um, the feminist, okay, the feminist ethic is these feminist pers perspectives that have been included that, like in this card that talks about this, there, um, um, there has, um, when there has been more, um, when the feminist perspectives have been included in discussion, there has been more peaceful ends to, um, to the discussion. So it takes into account right more of feminist values, um, in which our card, um, sorry, in which our Magden, oh, oh, our Magden one card explains that, um, which is our all card. And so it's just saying that with these feminist perspectives, there's been more peaceful results from it. And that's what we want to do is embrace this feminist ethic. Um, because, I mean, this. By embracing the feminist ethic, we can begin to get rid of this masculine ideology that's been, it, it literally there's never been a feminist ethic. And because there's always been and this, the international world has always been ingrained in this masculine ideology. Yeah, it's so caused. What will the feminist ethic do? Like it, in practice. In practice, yeah. it's we have that in our card. Um, is it like female politicians? Or like, no, it's 